All right. So there's the panel. <coughs> it stands approximately I don't know what it is. Probably 50 inches or so. Oh, more than that. That's four foot. So so it's that uh, couple inches under five feet. Uh, width wise, it looks to be what maybe 30 inches. Yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Anyway, it's a good panel, and uh, it delivers, that's for sure. Uh, even if I didn't clean it, I'm only going to hook up, um, what do you call it, 10 gauge to this, because I don't need a lot. 10 gauge is more than enough to bring this down into here. I'll bring it down here, you know, bring it in through the hole, and um, so everything will more or less be here. I'll put another little 12 volt um, fuse box right here so I'll have some fuses on it and that's kind of like where we'll be so then I can tap off of that and go wherever I want the fuse boxes are nice to have or some type of a tap so you're not keep you're not just keep gathering wires and you know with eye hooks with nuts and bolts on top of one another you know that you don't want to do so using a lot of crap going uh, with a lot of redundancy I mean I just don't need it uh, here's a little fuse box in here this has got lights on it what else is in here uh, there's another ground type separate grounds in now if I was to use this one I would tie the whole top together so that whole bottom bar you know what if I tied that together then I would have two, four, six, eight, ten grounding straps. You know what? And if I have to take them off, I got the plug. This is what I'm going to use for the ground. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll run a jumper across. Whoop, where are we? I'll run a jumper across the base so they'll all be connected as one ground. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this one. I'm not going to use the other one. So, all right. So much for that. Uh... Now, uh, what do we have? Battery terminals. Well, I'm going to need those when I connect to the battery. Uh, here's some more heavy-duty fuses. Waterproof stuff, but they're going to be inside, so I don't need those. Uh, so I think we're pretty well copacetic here. Uh, shock sensor. What's in here? Uh, magnetic switching. Switches, shock sensors, bulbs, connectors. Okay. All right. I got what I need. I just wanted to make sure something getting, didn't get thrown in the drawer accidentally and I was missing something. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump a wire across on the flat down on those screws. I'll take one screw out. I'll make a jumper to come across. That way they will all be as one then I can just plug into each one with the ground uh, seeing that I have two four six eight fuses uh, very easily have here because I got ten if I need them all right so I'll be all set so I'm gonna put this back I'm gonna put that back and uh, and we will see so that's kind of the easiest way I noticed too what I'm doing wrong here with this um, camera too. The camera's on a tripod right now. So with it being on a tripod, uh, I'm holding it down so you're not seeing what I'm seeing because I'm holding the tripod straight. When in fact I should be holding the camera straight. So alright, yeah see the wall I did? That's when I was gonna start doing videos. That was a piece of wall I'm in the garage. I just started camouflaging it, and um, and that's as far as we got. So anyway, I don't need all that blooming camouflage wall stuff. You see what you see. I'm not a producer. I'm not going nuts, right? So all right, guys. All right. Anyway, I'm getting ready to wire the solar panel, and it's pouring rain, but. Once I get everything ready, it won't take long at all to go up there and get wet. 
However, I got to show you something here. This is some wire that I bought years ago on eBay. Um, it's supposed to be, if I remember right, but let me see here. Uh, 8 gauge. This is supposed to be 8 gauge. Now I bought this on eBay. By no means is that 8 gauge. This is 14 gauge. So, I did complain about it when I bought it. They gave me a discount because I actually cut a piece and I showed them. And I told them how I have 10 and 8 gauge here. And I know the difference. The casings are about the same size. So at that point, it must have got spun on the wrong spool. Or that's why they're selling it. it well, it wasn't really cheap. It was like uh, 12 cents less per foot than the other stuff I normally get out of California. However, the shipping was cheaper because I do buy my wire, as a rule, out of California. Excuse me for all the noise in the back. I'm just waiting to hear. I gotta, I gotta check in. So anyway, I'm wiring a solar panel. I picked this up and I'm saying, you know, it might be close enough. And it's not. It's nowhere near close enough. So, um, and this isn't really long enough. So this is short by about eight feet. Well, luckily, I still have a couple rolls of it left. And there's probably, but, oh, I don't know, close to 150 feet on this one and 100 feet or 100 and a quarter on that one. Maybe more, actually. These are 250 foot rolls. Now, I do get these out of, out of California. And uh, these are 8 gauge. And it is 8 gauge. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is, uh, seeing that I'm going to put this up and it's going to stay. And even if we decide to move, you know what? Screw it. It's going to stay there. I'm just going to buy all new. You know, that's all there is to it. So, meanwhile, I want to make sure that it can give me what I need. And what it has on it is 8 gauge. So, I want to feed off it with the same gauge. I don't want to downsize, especially when you're adding wire. I should actually, if I was going any longer than the 10 or 12 feet, I would say I'd go up another meaning down, I'd go to six or a four, uh, because you end up with line wash. You end up, you, you get the, the volts, but you don't get the amps. You follow me? So that's what happens. You definitely end up, especially big time on DC stuff. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. So beware if you decide to buy a lot of wire off of eBay uh, at the price is right, because uh, the shielding may look good, but the wire itself is not what they claim it to be. Well, as you can see, it's raining. However, that doesn't stop me. <laughs> well, you're not going to be able to see it. But there's the panel. And now that tree, believe it or not, is going to be in the way in the summertime. However, it's going to get some real good light all the way across to there. And at that point, it won't get direct sunlight, but it'll get enough light to still generate. And then once it gets over there, we'll have some off-center light. So that, believe it or not, will work just fine where it is. And I got the wire all strung down and inside, so now it's just a matter of waiting for a good day. And, uh, well, you know what? I really don't need to wait for a good day. I can finish it off, actually, inside, because I'll be inside. Uh, wait for a good day to see if it's generating or a windy day to see if the wind turbine is doing its thing because that's uh, Five years old uh, At night if it starts to turn and I see the little light going on There's a little red light on the bottom. I'll know it's working I hooked up the scanner out here so I can kind of like listen to what's going on. I get tired of watching 
Star Trek and Judge Dredd and reality shows and all the other shit. So, but anyway, uh, I'm hooking up over here. So I got my number fours coming through down off the wind turbine, which I really didn't need it, but I have it, so I just used it. Uh, can't hurt. Number eight coming off the solar panel. This is number uh, 14 uh, dual conductor. It's a uh, it's, uh, marine grade power cord. It's red and black. So that's there. I put that, as long as I was up there, I ran it anyway. So I have it if I need it for something. Um, you know, maybe when the other wires break, I got another one I can use and I don't have to worry about running it. It's there. There is the uh, regulator charger. Once that gets hooked up, there's the fuse. Now I gotta hook up the block for ground. I'm going to tie the ground right into the electrical panel on the, uh, well, just tie it right to the box. So I should be all right with that for a ground. Plus I got earth ground out there. Uh, what I did temporarily was I just hooked up the two batteries here, but those aren't the batteries I'm gonna be using, but I hooked them up anyway to give me something just to see if everything's gonna work. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, it's a little after 3 o'clock, so now I'm just going to kind of pick up a little bit behind me and get some of these tools put away. And then, uh, and then I'll start doing what I need to do over there. Uh, it's pouring rain still, so I'm glad I put that uh, wind turbine up when I did. So, uh, it's raining. Uh, so the wind turbine's up, solar panel's up. I really haven't got to worry about anything right now. Is there anything else I can do kind of inside? A few things I want to do outside, but uh, I can handle that. As you're saying, uh, starting tomorrow night, it's going to clear up again, apparently. And uh, all next week through Christmas and things, it's supposed to be in the high 50s, low 60s. So, uh, we will see. So, but meanwhile, what do I got over here? I've got the regulator charger. I have all my wires coming in. I have a 12 volt fuse box and I have a 12 volt grounding block. I've got a couple batteries down there for now, but like I say, those aren't the ones. Um, I'm still thinking on, do I want to put the batteries outside or inside? They really should be outside. So I don't know yet. 